Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video we are going to be exploring a rain load example where we're actually going to calculate the uh, design rain load R. So let's look at our given information. We are being told to compute the rain load R assuming the primary drain is blocked. The secondary drain is a 6 inch wide, 4 inch high closed scupper and is set 2.5 inches above the primary drain. The building is on a site in Memphis, Tennessee, and we are told to use a 100-year design storm with a one-hour duration. So here is our um, plan view of our roof. Okay, so this is looking down on the roof, and we can see that the roof drainage area is going to be 100 feet by 75 feet. We can tell that that's the roof drainage area because this entire area is going to have to drain to uh, these drains here, okay? So we're gonna, you know, we can even put some little notes here, some little arrows for the direction of flow, all right? Um, now, that's what we're looking at in plan view. So let's go ahead and write solution and let's make sure we know uh, how we can visualize this. So if I look at a side view of this, if I look at a side view of this, of this roof somehow, you know, um, our plan view doesn't really let us know exactly if we have a parapet or not, but let's just say we do. Our primary drain um, is maybe somewhere right here, and it has a little pipe system that comes down, but let's say that becomes blocked, and we um, end up having to use our secondary drain, which is this scupper system here, okay? So again, this is our secondary drain, okay? And this is going to be a, um, a profile view. All right, so the first thing we can make a note of is that um, it says the primary drain is, um, I'm sorry, the, the closed scupper is set two and a half inches above the primary drain, okay? So what that is saying is if we zoom in on on this right here, the closed, the, the scupper, the scupper system, which may, you know, look, look kind of like this, is set two and a half inches above the primary drain system, which is somewhere over here, okay? So there's a two and a half inch two and a half inch distance there. So what's happening is when the primary drain becomes blocked, the water will then rise an additional two and a half inches before it's able to exit through the secondary drainage system um, scupper. So again, my little, my, you know, beautiful sketch here is just kind of zooming in on um, the primary and the secondary drainage and looking at this two and a half inch distance. Again, the, the secondary drain um, is set two and a half inches above the primary drain, which means if the primary drain is blocked, you're going to have a collection of two and a half inches of water on the roof before it starts draining out of the secondary drain. So what does that tell us? That tells us that D sub S, our static head, is two and a half inches. Okay, so that's one um, of the uh, components that we need. Okay, um, so, you know, we'll put a little star by that. We'll circle back to that. So let's follow our general procedure that we went through in our um, previous video. What uh, should we do first? Well, we can um, go ahead and uh, obtain the rainfall intensity, okay? So we're gonna say step one, rainfall intensity. Now I'm using um, this website by the National Weather Service it's hdsc.nws.noaa.gov slash hdsc slash pfds. And uh, for the site that I'm on, you know, it brings up a map. You go to the site that you're interested in, Memphis, Tennessee, 
and um, you look at a 100 year storm with a one hour duration and uh, make sure you have set the setting to rainfall intensity, not rainfall depth. Okay, if you set rainfall depth, you're gonna get a different number. So rainfall intensity, so you maybe pause the video, do this on your own, but I get the rainfall intensity as 3.24 inches per hour, okay? So um, sometimes if you see a problem just in academic, in an academic setting, you may be given the rainfall intensity in the problem statement. Um, in real life, you can look it up on this uh, website or you talk to your water resource engineer, your hydraulics or hydrology professional, and they can give you a good idea of what to use for I. The next thing um, we can do, step two, is compute the drainage area. This part's pretty straightforward. It's 100 feet by 75 feet. And so, of course, this is 75 thousand square feet okay so um so that's step two and what about uh, our next step so i'm sorry 7500 square feet what am i thinking 7500 square I, mean, I just made that drainage area way bigger than it really was can't do basic math 7500 square feet okay um the next step is compute the flow rate so step three we're gonna say q equals 0 0.0104 ai there's a four right here and so of course um, if you multiply all of these things together 0 0.0104 times 7500 square feet times 3.24 inches per hour. Um, you have some unit manipulations that are occurring for us here. So point, uh, 0 0.0104 times 7,500 times 3.24. So I get basically 253 gallons per minute, okay? So in this, when you're using this Q equation, your input for area needs to be square foot your input for I needs to be inches per hour. If your inputs are square feet and inches per hour, your output Q will be gallons per minute because this 0.0104 will take care of some of the conversions um, for you, okay? That coefficient has a lot of meaning um, balled up into it, okay? But either way, you'll get out gallons per minute, okay? Now, um, step four, we can enter, enter, table C8.3-3 of ASCE 716 okay now when you enter into that table um, I'm gonna I'm gonna enter into it myself right now you're entering in the middle of the table the, the values in the middle of the table those are Q values so if you um, take a look here you can find where we have Q equals about 253 gallons per middle, minute in that table. Okay, so find where we have our Q value in the table. Okay, if you look carefully all the way to the right on the right column, you will see that we should obtain a hydraulic head DH of eight inches, okay? And I can tell that because um, if you look at the third line for the drainage system in the third line, it says if you have a six inch wide, four inch high closed scupper. Well, that's what our problem statement said we have. We have a six inch wide, four inch high closed scupper. And so we're on the third line of, of the values in that table and um, Q equals 253. So you move up and you get DH is eight inches okay now um, again you can use linear interpolation so it just uh, you know I made up this problem in a way that um, it was nice and convenient we we got a Q value that's exactly in the table but that's if you don't get a nice Q value that's exactly in the table linear interpolation in this table is allowed you can interpolate between values and then you can um, determine your your DH um, requirement from linear interpolation. So don't don't think you're always gonna get a nice convenient number that you can just directly obtain from the table, all right? 
And so finally, um, step five, we can uh, calculate our, our rain load. So step five is R equals 5.2 DS plus DH. And so that's 5.2 times 2.5 inches plus eight inches. And I'm gonna use my TI-36X Pro calculator. So um, I get 54.6 PSF. So our rain load acting on the roof that we would need to design for um, is 54.6 PSF. And again, if you wanna sketch that out um, as like a little side view here, then that would look something like this. This is a, a two dimensional side view. This is R equals 54.6 PSF. And you know, maybe this is the 75 foot dimension and the 100 foot dimension in this figure would be coming out of the screen at you. So remember, this is a surface load. This is a load pounds per square foot. It's a load uh, spread out over a surface area. Okay, so that is going to be the conclusion of this video. Thanks for watching.